Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give God a shout of praise. We give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. And Father, as we come before you, oh, our hearts are rejoicing. Just rejoice. It is through praise. It is through worship that we get our deliverance. And this morning, God has something for you. We welcome you to day number six of our Easter Harvest Crusade. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let me see those hands. Wave them in the atmosphere and just exalt the name of Jesus. Come on, give him all the glory. I believe that's why you came this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't get up and get dressed just because. But you came to give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Bishop reminded us on Friday night that we have to get our heads out of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our head, our head has the ability to stop our blessing and to block our breakthrough. Hallelujah. So right now I'm imploring you this morning just to open up your hearts. Get your hearts in it. Open up your hearts and welcome the Holy Spirit in your heart. Hallelujah. Come on, exalt the name of Jesus. Exalt his name. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit this morning. Come on, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, touching anything concerning him, he is in our midst. And we are more than two. We are more than three this morning. And so we know that the presence of the Lord is already here. Hallelujah. But we're welcoming him in our hearts this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, raise those hands. Raise those hands. Raise those hands.
praise and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your Presence is like heaven. Hallelujah. Your presence is heaven to me. When I'm in your presence, God, when I'm in your presence, God. Nothing like your presence, Lord. Nothing like your presence, Lord. Your presence is heaven to me. Come on, anything you require this morning, we're in the presence of the Lord. What you want to do, Holy Spirit, move how you want to move. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do here in this place. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do. Holy Spirit, move how you want to move. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do here in this place. Come on, this morning we are creating an, an, the atmosphere for God to move. And we are saying, Holy Spirit, come and do what you want to do. Come and meet every individual at the point of their need this morning. Hallelujah. So all you got to do is to open up your heart and just ask the Holy Spirit to come and do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do. Holy Spirit, move. How you want to move, Holy Spirit, do what you want to do here in this place. Come on, is anybody believing God for miracles this morning?
how you want to move. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do here in this place. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do. Holy Spirit, move how you want to move. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do here in this place. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine I can only imagine yes I can only imagine I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. Surrounded by what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Would I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. in the sun I can only imagine when all I can do is forever forever worship you to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance or in all of you be still Hallelujah, 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 
Hallelujah. To be surrounded by your glory. We're still in Easter Harvest Crusade mode. I'm going to encourage those of you who have businesses, salons, uh, you, you're able to place this on your notice board at the work at your office. They're going to be at the information center for you to pick up and just post there. But we want to get the word out. Amen? Come on now. We want to get the word out. The souls have been coming in. The souls have been coming in, and we want to continue to have the harvest. Plenty, plenty. Amen? When you plant corn or you plant tomato, you don't expect one tomato on the branch, do you? No, you expect a harvest. Amen? And so that's what we're believing God for during this Easter harvest crusade, that the souls will be here, the souls will be received to the Lord, to the kingdom of God. So we are doing our part. Amen? 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 I'm going to invite you to jump up on your feet. We're going to make a declaration over our giving, and we are going to give to the Lord. Worship team, are you ready? Yes. Excellent. Lift your hands and stand in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have ushers here. We have ushers in the, in the aisle. We have the point of sale machine here and one also there. And for those of you online, if you want to be or should want to be, should want to be a part of this worship, because it is, we honor God not only with singing, with dancing, but also where our finances are concerned. I'm going to invite you to be a part of this. www.thecelebrationchurch.org Go there and you'll find ways to give. Are you ready? Lift your giving this morning. I am a farmer. Come on now, farmers are expectant. I am a farmer in the kingdom of God. Therefore, my seed must produce, must produce, will produce, is producing a harvest. I am expectant. Therefore, I watch as I plant my seed. 
I watch for my harvest. Some will be tenfold, some will be fiftyfold, some will be a hundredfold. I know that God is increasing my giving. Therefore, my harvest is coming in Jesus' name. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Worship team. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We extol your name. Thank you, Lord. And as you're coming, your dance coming up. And as you're placing that seed, you give your seed a name. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Oh, and let the I will call upon the Lord, I will call upon the for Lord. He is worthy to be for praised. He is worthy to be I will call upon the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Shout our praise. I'm going to ask you, the offering is blessed. The offering is blessed. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to remain standing. Let's see the hands of those. I know online you could probably just give a thumbs up. Can I see the hands of those you were with us for the day one of Easter Harvest Crusade? 
Day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. Come on now, that's everybody. We are in day six of Easter Harvest Crusade. Please invite everybody you know. Invite persons out. God is doing a great thing. Our expectancy has been, as they say, turn up. Amen? Yes, it's up. And so we are continuing this morning. This morning I have a man of God with me, no stranger uh, to Celebration Church, no stranger in the pulpit. And we do thank our senior pastor for the opportunity whenever we, he allows us to use the pulpit. We do thank him for that opportunity. This morning I'm going to ask you to help me make welcome Evangelist Alando E. Banks as we go through day six of Easter Harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. While you're standing, grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. And you can begin to turn them to John chapter 2. Hallelujah. I want to greet my senior leader. Sir, I love you. I'm always going to be sending love to you. I just want to bless you, sir, wherever you are. And I thank you for this opportunity. I want to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're worthy. And I want to greet our leaders. I bless you. I thank you for the support. Thank you for being here also expectant in your spirit. And I bless the believers and I bless those the first time visitors. I bless you. I greet you as well. I, visit, I bless those online. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. You could have chose somewhere else to be this morning, but you're here with us. Hallelujah. If you're at John chapter 2, you should be there by now. Say amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take from verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what I have, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Heavenly Father, this is your word. Your word is already blessed. It is already anointing. I thank you, Lord, for your presence because your word is a tangible presence here. So, Father, use me as your vessel. I vow to give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. I take none for myself. I am just mere vessel. I am nothing, Lord. But with you, Mando Kushandaya, I give you the access. To have free reign in this place. Randa Bakashaya. Do as you please. Deliver if you choose. Heal if you choose. Mandeka Moshataya. Whatsoever plan heaven has. Runda Makasai. Release it through your servant this morning, oh Father. And uh, Lord, I just want to bless you even now as you're about to do. Lakanda Romondaya. Holy Spirit. Rabandai. Begin to move upon the people. Begin to move upon the chairs. Begin to move upon those watching. Let the anointing that breaks yoke, let that anointing that breaks fetters, let that anointing that heals Rabandai begin to operate as we are here, Rakunda Masaya, in your presence, in your tabernacle, Rakushande Mosataya. Your word said that the mountains melt like wax in your presence. So, Father, who can stand before you? What can stand before you? Rabanda Namokosaya. You said the earth is the Lord's and the full thereof O king so take charge over this territory take charge landa mashondo mokosai i bless you in the mighty name of jesus i bless you hallelujah hallelujah please take your seats hallelujah glory i have a message randa bokosai jesus i don't know why the prophet chose expectation to be the theme but God, man, God must have been smiling. Hallelujah. Because 
Like right now, every manda bokosha, every verse, every chapter in this Bible, rabando bokosha, you can preach a message on expectation. Hallelujah. 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 So today, I want to go through a few things with you on the topic of expectations. Hallelujah. I'm going to deliver a word which is talking about the seed of expectation. Hallelujah. So let's just take our time and let's break it down a little bit. So I want to give you a few explanations or a few definitions of expectation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So one definition is that it's a strong belief. Another says it is a state to look forward to something. Hallelujah. And the next one, it says it is a feeling that something will or something should happen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to use this passage of scripture in a unique way. I'm sure that after this service, I wouldn't have wasted your time. I'm definitely not wasting God's time. Because my time is wrapped up in him. So I won't even look at my time. Hallelujah. You will never look at this passage the same again. Many times you'd hear persons talk about the miracle that Jesus did. Now we're on the point of expectation. Hallelujah. So I'm going to do a bit of recap because I want to get this across to you well. So we started out. Uh, Apostle Richards came and he told us. Don't backslide. Hallelujah. Glory. Pastor came and pastor brought us and she showed us that God is going to change my story so that he can get his glory. Hallelujah. Mighty God of Daniel. We went straight into Goshen with Dr. With Dr. Crystal. Hallelujah. And I brought up something with you. We said here what well, we're going to fix all the damaged expectations. And then Sister Nicole came and she gave her testimony and she showed us that here what? Uh, we have to praise our way into Goshen. And we can't go with the baggage that we had before. We have to leave that man there. Because we have to get rid of all unforgiveness. We have to bring all the love and we have to praise ourselves into that place. Hallelujah. And then Bishop came and she told us, Rabandaya, get your head out of this place. Put your heart in action and get your head. Rabanda Mokosaya. So I want to get something straight. Bishop also shared with us and she would have went through and she would have explained to us that the word is where our expectation lies. Amen. So let's get into it. Hallelujah. This passage is laying heavy on me. I wanted to, you know, catch some extras of the damaged expectation but God said no man the damaged patch hallelujah hallelujah so he said hear what you're going to go in because you have an expectation I don't know if anybody is here who is believing God Rabandaya Shobondaya for something Rande Bokosaya it is not easy to achieve but you understand that hear what you're in a level of want you're in a position of need and shabanda. I don't know. Is anyone here with faith? Because here what I believe that God is going to do something today. And he's going to do something for this week. Rabanda and the other week to come. And I want to help somebody to get into position. Because here what? If we're not into position. Then we may very well miss what we are expecting God for. But I refuse to miss what God has for us. I refuse to miss what God has. Man de kosaya for my name. God said let heaven uh, be done on earth uh, rabbi i declare so shall it be i declare so shall it be hallelujah so i'm going to touch the character of mary in this passage i read the king james version but i really like the niv version it breaks it down in a more relatable manner so I'm going to go through it one more time. And then I'm going to start digging. Hallelujah. I should have brought out the shovel again because I love digging. My God. <laughs> I didn't want to be an undertaker, but my God, I think God is doing something in my life. Hallelujah. So it says, on the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, 
they have no more wine. Now, this is the direct response. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother could have said, the boy I rode her out of the me carry one concern to him. And he goes, say, woman, why you about me? I know. Then he goes, say, him, how are not come yet? But I want to show you something. Because remember, this is the word of God that we're using. And we need to build our expectations, right? Hallelujah. Mary realized that there was a need present. She understood that Jesus, who is the living word, could fix it. The thing here is that Mary had to operate in some characteristics of expectation. So let's touch a few of those characteristics. There are many, my God. So the first one I want to touch is the trust she had to trust in the word so that the word could produce what her need is present for so she went to Jesus because she trusted that the problem that I'm going to bring to Jesus he can fix it you see you have to have a level of expectation when you're in need. And sometimes we forget that here what? Having the expectation in your mind alone won't do it. <sighs> you literally have to engage that expectation on your level so that it can manifest. She literally knew that Jesus didn't do anything before. He didn't perform any miracles. He didn't fix any major thing in the supernatural or anything at all. She would only know that, you know, he is the carpenter's son. Not just the carpenter's son. He is my seed. I got a promise. <laughs> from the most high God and that promise provoked something in me it provoked a level of trust because I understood that Joseph did not plant this seed on the inside this seed came from a realm that I am not so familiar with and I had to trust that realm I had to trust who was going to plant that seed and when she got the seed, she had to trust herself. Even though she's limited, ah, she had to trust herself. She had to believe in that seed to say, hear what? God said something about that seed. And I am the one who he entrusted with that seed. So I also have to believe that, hear what? If I sleep and have miscarriage, oh my. <sighs> Not just me. <sighs> That will be in jeopardy, but also every other person uh, who God has assigned this seed to deliver, who God has pointed the seed Rabandaya uh, in their direction to deliver them from whatever struggle, whatever need that they have been faced with. She understood that if I were to have a miscarriage, uh, the entire world would be doomed. Oh my. So she said, hear what? God entrusted me. And I believe on what God said to me. And because I believe and I have caused this seed to come into this world safe and sound with the grace of God. I'm going to come back to that seed right now. Because I know what I carried for nine months. 
Jesus can say anything he wants. I could hear less. Elisha heard when Elijah said, stay here, I'm going over to the other side. And Elijah discerned and perceived in his spirit that Elisha, that Elijah had something in store for him. Elisha said, I have a need. No matter what you want, say Elijah, me now go get offended. Me now go backslide. In fact, I'm going to allow God to change my story so that I, Rakandaya, can see God's glory. I need to go into the promise of Goshen. I need to visit that place. I've patched my damaged expectations and I have a belief with me because God's word said that we have to believe upon the word and any man who believes Leave it in him should not perish but have should not perish but have is anybody here Rakandaya expecting anything from God is anyone here today Hakandaya believe in God for a creative miracle because you understand that you're in a position and your position is so serious that no man cannot assist you you need to believe God on a level that he's gonna create this thing you don't know how he's gonna do it in fact you don't care how you just want to know that when God show up whatever problem you have been faced with the problem would have ceased and desist that problem would have been solved whether you're going through high waters or whether you're going through a fire you just want to know that if you're in the fire he's a fourth man there to back you up you want to know if you're in high water he said he's gonna lift up a standard oh my god is anybody here with an expectation glory now I noted some stuff with Mary Mary was not like any regular mother she understood that she was carrying purpose and know that the purpose has been delivered before you she understood that now it is time for me to cash out you see, if you go to an ATM, you would have had to believe that there's something in your account. You don't just go because you want to stand in a long line. You don't just go because you like embarrassment. Because you know if you have nothing, you're not going to go in a line. Mary understood that she what? This promise that was given, that is right before me, ah, I believe so much, I have a level of expectation in this promise, I'm going to cash out. She didn't go for just herself. Remember I said that she had to plant a seed. Now Mary literally planted the first seed of expectation. Because those who were around, they invited Jesus, but they didn't understand. Wine had run out. And they don't know how it's going to go. Party done. Well, the bride and the groom have to just, have to call it an early night. But Mary said, no, no, no party not start yet because me have some cheddar where you will never see you invited me and you also invited my ATM I'm gonna cash out my God when Mary literally went to Jesus remember Jesus it is said that this is the first miracle that Jesus would have performed Oh my God. So when she went, she understood that if she was to just keep the promise alone and keep the secret to herself, it wouldn't work. 
So she had to literally provoke action to that expectation. She had to go and speak that word to provoke the activation of a manifestation. So when she said, Jesus, they have no wine. Immediately, her expectation, or expectation is in the word, right? Immediately, her expectation said, woman, why are you provoking me? My time has not yet come. I don't care if your time has not yet come. I don't care if you've been watching your clock. I don't care if you've been watching the calendar. I don't care because I know that if I will speak just the word, my God will be provoked. He will have to create something for me. Whatever I've been going through, once I call upon the name of my God, I have to get an answer. Preacher, what kind of answer are you talking about? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it said, Ask, and it shall. I'm not even going to go further. It says, Ask, and it shall. So if you have a problem, if you have a need, when you come to my God, if you can only ask, your manifestation must come. It shall be given unto thee. So when Mary asked and she planted the first seed, she had to push in the card. Because your expectation not going to work in your mind. That's why Bishop had to come and tell you, get your mind out of it. Put your heart in it. Because you're going to take out that card. And you're going to push it in. And when you push it in, oh my, it's going to respond and ask what you want. Now hear what? After the machine has spoken, you have to go push some buttons. In other words, you have to pump some faith. Pastor came and pastor reminded us that faith without work. So hear what Mary said after. She didn't take the insult of why you bother me. She never cared about that. She just knows that here, if I provoke my expectation, then whosoever is behind the fix must come to my rescue. She said to the servants, whatsoever he say unto you, So some persons are here, I told you I'm provoked. In my spirit, I'm provoked. I feel my office of the evangelist on me. Because when I started out preaching, I didn't expect to. I asked. That was my mistake. And when I asked, God responded so quick. Ah, in fact, when I asked, my head wasn't in it. My heart was there. I said, I wanted to preach like I see how my man of God preach. And I made the mistake to ask. As I asked, immediately God came and spoke to me in the bus. I was in the second seat, in the second row, on the left hand side. And God said, just turn and tell the people, Jesus loved them. When Jesus spoke to me, my head came back in the picture. My head said, no. You mean right No. And he said, yes. I'm going to say, you mean no, no, no? Because you know we Jamaican, our level different, you know, we can't say it one time. 
Hallelujah. And he said, yes, no, no, no. And then the devil, <laughs> the devil came and the devil said, no, no, no. He said, if you turn round, I rest them around at the back, you see. And he might wait for you to come burn you out. No, I'm sitting at the front of the bus. I was one of the first persons to get onto the bus. Me never seen a Rasta man enter no bus. So hear my head. Rasta man at the back of the bus. My mama never do this yet, you know. You see, when I turn around and the eye look, the eye see a Ras round at the back. The man turban the way up in the sky like him a Ras before my barn. The man have a flag on one side. And him have a Moses rod on the other side. I said, Jesus, you have to go come back. All fear crept in. Me say, what you know? Me now say, I think uh, the man have to burn me out. <laughs> I cried going home. I couldn't tell you which route the driver took. All I know from the bus left the park. I reached my destination. I cried the entire journey. I begged for forgiveness. I begged God forgive me. Me I beg you. Me sorry. Me apologize until me tired. For God has been good. Now look at this. After I got another opportunity, and trust me, the head was not in it. Pure heart alone. I jumped up out of my bed so early, my mother was like, where are you going? I said, may have a word to deliver. I got up with fire, and I woke up about 4 a.m. Church never did a start. Until all the way at 9 o'clock. I started to get ready. And then the Holy Spirit said, take your time. Your heart tonight, no. And the word of bubble upon the inside, no. But men are ready just yet. Your time has not yet come. You see, when I got out, I delayed a bit. And I went out. Now, all I needed to take was just one minivan from where I was to get here. I ended up waiting on a bus that he told me to wait on. He said, wait on 16. Now, for those watching on stream, if you're overseas, 16, if you want to check if you have patience, or if you want patience to have her perfect work in you, Come to Jamaica and say you want to wait on a 16. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> if you can't cry tears, I can tell you how to cry. Wait on 16. If you want to build faith, wait on 16. That bus, my God. When I was heading out to the bus stop, here comes the devil again. 16 gone already. I'm going to look up and say, God, you can't send me out with that word. I may jump up from 4 o'clock and the 16 I go past. The devil is a liar. When I went to the bus stop, the bus stop looked empty. Now remember, the preachers would have been coming to you and have been telling you. Even Bishop, she said it. She said, we were brought up in a way that they say that believing is based upon our. Them say, seeing is believing. But God's word says different. It says, believe, then you will see. Now, to believe is also a product or a characteristic of expectation. Now, while I was there, 
I believed that the bus was on its way. So I said, hear what? Sister Nicole said, we have to praise our way into the promise. I said, hear what? I'm going to put on some worship song and I'm going to praise my way in. As I turned the, sp the song on and the worship started, here comes the bus. When the bus stopped at my feet, the devil said, when you go up on the bus, don't say nothing. Him say, if you say nothing, me and you. Shh, the devil not understand. Before I come to Christ, I never take talk. No, I come in a Christ. I'm supposed to take talk from even you, the little worm. I say, if you even open your mouth one more time, I'm mash it up in here. When I went on the bus, I just said, driver, have a good morning. I'm going to preach. The driver looked for me and the driver said, do your thing. I'm not even wait for him response because I'm ready. I'm done stepping on the bus. And when I said good morning, I said it's so soft. I see one rugged you drone at the back. The man push out him in and him said, project your voice, man. I told you if you have expectation, you must get a response. I told you I don't care how God is going to respond. You just want to know that he responds to your expectation. <laughs> so when Mary said to the servants, whatsoever he say unto you, do it. She was expecting a response. <laughs> now little did they know. Here comes the response. Jesus said, bring out your problem. Set your problem before me. And after you have set your problem, I want you to draw. We're dealing with the seed of expectation. Now look at this. Pastor mentioned it before. God is a God of confirmation. Pastor said, no farmer, no go plant without an expectation. Me not think farmer love ramping a dirt. In fact, I only pick me alone me no ramping a dirt. A woman I got teach you we are all children. So we have to go ramping on some side. <sighs> when the farmer plants a seed, he's planting with the hope that something is going to spring forth. And whatsoever spring forth from my first seed is going to be so much. It's going to bless me and it's going to bless the consumers. I'm going to have customer. Hmm. Mary understood that I am also present at the party. And if the wine run out, it means that I can't get no more drink. The other people, them, them also want more drink. So I'm going to carry the problem to the ATM. Now, what happened is that when they started to draw and to give from what was transpired from Mary's expectation, The wine was running out and they didn't know how to fix it. You are here sitting down. And this is where evangelism comes in. Your expectation must not only be for you alone. Someone else outside is about to lose their life. Someone else outside is about to give up. But because you are sitting here under this word, you understand that if I have an expectation, something must manifest for me. And not just for me. If I can just believe upon my expectation, 
whomsoever I carry along with me, they must be blessed. They must experience a part of my manifestation. You know someone in the office who is going through hell just like you. You knew of what it was like when you were stringed up in the hospital. Come now. Go for someone else who is now stringed up on the bed that you once were upon. But your fixer came with the manifestation. I don't know about you, but I've been inviting people. Because I love the word. I love the preaching. I love the anointing. I love it. But I understand something. I was going to preach a message talking about the two fishes and the five loaves. And God shifted me right here. He said, the reason why I'm shifting you is this. Persons would come for the multiplication because they understand that when Jesus do anything in your life, ah, it provokes multiplication and it shall be well with you. So they come out expecting something. But here why we don't see miracles like that anymore it's not that god has changed nope he's the same god yesterday today and forever the reason is you don't have the faith for someone else if you were to just bring yourself alone and your problem alone is fixed. How much glory can God get? <sighs> Remember this was the first miracle. It said in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus started his healing ministry. He started out with teaching the word. Why teach the word? Because upon hearing the word, your faith will begin to climb. He also taught, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. But let me ask you a question. If you have the seed and you don't plant that seed, how is it going to... You can have a seed and you can even die and the seed is still. My God. But if you plant that seed, you will forever be a sower. You will forever be a reaper. God wants to change your story to get his glory. So while you are here and you're expectant, I'm helping you today. Go out and carry some sick. Ah, go and find some lame. Go and find some person who are on the edge. Ah, they are on the line and they say, watch it. I think I'm going to jump. I'm not wait for sleep. I think I'm going to just jump off now. Go and carry them here. Because you see, when you carry them here upon your expectation, I guarantee you, ah, even before this meeting is out, even before this week is out, you're going to see some things. Rabbi and I believe that God is going to cause some eyes to pop, some ears to pop, some hands to come back, some some people to be delivered, some infirmity to be dried up, to be passed, even now as we're preaching, even now as the word is going forth somebody 
you're getting a testimony. Somebody you're being delivered. Somebody your problem is about to be gone. The Holy Spirit is moving right beside you. He's moving upon you. He's right in your row. He's about to do a work in you. Jesus, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. My God, you're the God of the more than enough. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's continue. After Jesus gave the instructions and the men drew, I'm going to carry you to verse number 9. It says, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine after. The guests have had too much to drink. But you, you have saved the best till now. I'm going to keep my head down a little bit so that my gift can start flowing. Don't get offended. No, I don't need to look at you. I just need to set my eyes upon this word. Because it is saying to me that if Jesus could take water and turn it into wine, it means that if you can just believe God to fix even just one small thing, he can change a lot of small things, which will become a whole lot of big things. So if he can heal you from just sinuses, if he can heal you from just the mere flu, ah, no, if he can heal you from asthma, whoosh, ah, it may seem like just a small thing. It means that he can also heal epilepsy. It would mean he can also deal with tumors. It would mean that he is also the cancer conqueror. Everybody thought that he was a small C, but in fact, oh my God, my Christ, he is the big C. If you can just realize that Jesus is literally waiting upon just one person, to provoke with their expectation to provoke his manifestation then we would be experiencing multiplication <sighs> now here is the thing everyone puts out their smaller problems first so if you would just look for the person who has the least amount of doubt first. If you would look for the person with the least hope first. You don't get it. Because you were first with your expectation. With your faith. Which is the mustard seed. When you connect with someone else. With a little more faith. God will be able to do a thing. That will also shock you. It will also, let me just stick a pin right there. 
I'm going to give you a little bit of more education. I want to educate you a little bit more. Probably some of you would have known. Probably some of you don't. I really like a play culture. No, that is beekeeping. Someone who rears bees. Something about honeybee is this. They have one stinger. And once they would have sting whatever or stung whatever, that would have been that would have been the end of their lives. But when the honeybee injects its stinger, it releases a pheromone that excites the other bees to come and try to sting in the same spot. If we can just inject our faith, if we can just inject our expectation, it would provoke excitement in others around, others to come, to try and inject their faith, to try and inject their expectation. They're going to come and plant their seed in the same soil. Because the result that you're getting, if I come and I plant in the same soil, ah, whatever result you would have been getting, I should get the same result. If you come and you sow a seed on this altar, and after you would have sown the seed on the altar, you would have experienced the multiplication. All those who would have been watching you when they saw you drag yourself in your one shoe, when they saw you drag yourself in your one suit, when they saw you drag yourself depressed, but you sowed a seed up a good soil and you got your harvest back when they see you coming out and you're shining and you're in the glory of God and the glory is shining upon you, they would run. They would run! Oh my! Oh my! God, you're good. Because you said that the master of the banquet, after he had tasted, ah, the word of God said, if you, he said, just taste and see. That my Lord is good and his mercies endure it forever. Oh my God. The revelation is getting sweeter and sweeter. Somebody you're here right now and you're looking upon us. You've seen us in the lights. Mr. Floyd, thank you for the lights. Before we came into the light, you wouldn't have seen us. But now that we have come into the light, you are seeing us. Just as though we came into the light, all you have to do is come also into the light. I don't care what you have been going through. I don't care what you have been taught. I don't care how you have been hurt. If you will just come and see that the Lord is good. I guarantee you that you would have to get I guarantee you that you would have to get. I guarantee you that you would have to get a manifestation from my God. Because he is Jehovah. Jehovah. 
He is Jehovah. Somebody right now. You need to take your head out of it. And put your heart in it. You need to come and say, I don't know no name of God. So hear what? I am going to come to Jehovah whatever. Whatever I've been through. Whatever I'm going through. Whatever I'm going to go through. Jehovah whatever. I'm here right now. Jehovah whatever use me right now. Jehovah whatever heal me right now. Jehovah whatever save me right now. Jesus you're worthy. Why should I come to Jehovah whatever? Will it all be well with me right now? Let's go back into the text. I told you I'm keeping my head down so that my gift can flow. After everybody bring out their first eight, he's asking now, how come you save the best till now? You never save the worst. No. How come you save the best till now? In other words, the word of God says, the last shall be first. You may be thinking to yourself that, but I'm me, I'm the last person that will come in now. God said, don't worry about that. If you can just bring your last self. When I do what I'm going to do in you. You're going to become the first. You are going to be the first person that saw preaching like that. You're going to be the first person that saw praying like that. You're going to be the first person that saw living like that. You're going to be the first Christian. You wonder why people have problems with you when you just get saved because you are the first they have been seen. Mary, oh my. Mary, you are the first person to believe in your son like that. It's not that Jesus couldn't have done other miracles before. Oh my God. God, y'all get deep. I love it. I love it. This Bible here would have been written over 2022 years ago. Messages would have been preached from this spot 2022 years years ago but because you came here with your expectation first it seemed like you're the last but because you came first you don't get it I am just delivering right now The last shall be first. Are the first time you ever hear it like this? It's the first time you have ever seen it like this. Why? Because God said in the last days, I'm gonna pour out my spirit. Ah, you still have time, so run and come now. If you're not saved, run and come now. He said, In the last days, I'm gonna pour out my spirit. 
And I'm going to do it upon all flesh. Somebody better leave their seat. Ah, you better run, come to the altar now. You better make up your mind because this is the last day. But it's going to be your first day. The first day in a Christendom. The first day on the Mando Kura Kandaya. The first day of experience manifestation. The first. waiting on you to make the first move so that he God you're worthy somebody better give God some praise I said somebody better give God some praise Worship team, I need you. Worship team, I need you. Worship team, I need you. The water is troubled. You say you've been there for too long. And you couldn't step in for the water. Somebody, the water is chubbin! Step into your miracle! Step into your miracle! Step into your miracle! Wherever you're watching from, I want you to just the same anointing in this place. It is in your room right now. It is right where you're at right now. Receive from God. You better pray. You better pray. You better pray. And the last time generational curse ever attached itself to you. You better pray. Jesus 
Hallelujah. For those of you who've come to the altar, know that you are planting a seed today for your family. You will be the first person of many to go to college. You'll be the first person who have ever received salvation. Whatever your first is today, it starts with this prayer. I'm going to ask you to repeat this for a simple prayer. Jesus, I thank you. You're going to say it very boldly. Congregation, extend your hands to them. Be praying for them even now. If you can speak in your heavenly language, go ahead right now. Those of you at the altar, Jesus, I thank you for my life today. I thank you that I am the seed of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for my sins. Today, I receive Jesus as my Savior, as my Lord. I confess my sins, and I am forgiven. And because of that, I am saved. I am saved. Turn to the person beside you and say, I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congregation, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you for the word that was implanted in our spirit this morning. I thank God for the word that was implanted in our hearts today. In the name of Jesus. There are some persons in front of you. There are counselors. They're going to accompany you to your seat. Take your personal belongings. And I'm going to invite you to just speak with them in the conference room. So that they can get some information from your name, your contact details. And someone from the office is going to check on you in the morning by the grace of God. And we're inviting you out this evening because the crusade continues this evening at 7 p.m. Give God a shout of praise, everybody. Give God a shout of praise. That's four souls in the kingdom of God. So we've, we're emptying hell and we're populating heaven. So you can take him to the conference room. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that the doors be open at this time. Well, I'm going to invite you to stand Hallelujah. Could we just bless God for those who streamed with us this morning? And we can do better than that. Give God thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Just extend your hands to the evangelist and say, Lord, I thank you for the gift on his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Just raise your hands. 
Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your people. We thank you, God, that you continue to be with them. You continue to lift them up. I thank you, God, that as we hear the message of expectation, God, our faith level has been rising, God. I declare that that problem, that challenge, as we were reminded this morning, bring them out and lay them before Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word reminds us that that which you have started in our lives, you're indeed continuing it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen, amen, amen. All right, a bit of instruction. Again, thank you for streaming. We bless you and we'll see you online this evening at 7 p.m. For those of you here...